One of the questions was, um, how is it that logic supervenes on our brains? And I think it's a good question. Um, I think it's a question that we're not currently in a position to give a full answer to. Um, for that, our understanding of how the brain and the mind are interrelated needs to be uh, much more advanced than it currently is. Um, but I think by way of analogy, I can give you an idea of how uh, a materialist conception of the mind, uh, how, it, how it can, how it approaches this question anyway. So to take the example of a computer, um, we know exactly uh, the parts that make up a computer and we know exactly what happens in those parts in order for the computer to do the things it's expected to do. Ultimately what happens inside a computer is electrons move around. That's all it is at a basic level. And yet we're happy to say things like the computer calculates uh, a sum, an equation, or the computer displays a web page. And yet we don't feel the need to posit some kind of immaterial entity, or immaterial knowledge or symbol or something from another realm that somehow is injected into the computer that enables it to do these things. We know exactly what's in a computer, what happens in a computer, and we also know that in a manner of speaking the result is greater than the sum of its parts. The ability to calculate or to display a web page supervenes on the fundamental activity of electrons in a computer. And what the materialist worldview says, or at least the version that I'm familiar with, is that in a similar way, the electrical and chemical activity inside the brain give rise to consciousness, thoughts, abstract concepts, etc. So logic, as in our internal representation of the most general features of the reality in which we find ourselves, logic in that sense supervenes on the physical. I hope that makes it a bit clearer.